everyone, and good morning. Welcome to our live feed update for April 10th. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and with me today is Aman. How are you doing, Aman? Hello, Taryn. Hello, everyone. It's a sad day for moi. But it's a sad day for Aman. We'll get through it. It is what it Ooh, is. Oh, I'm so mad. Yeah, I mean, you took the words That's out of my mouth. What else can I say? What else can I All say? right. Well, we're here to update you on everything that happened yesterday on the Big Brother Canada 10 live feeds. It was day 43. And uh, let's find out what, uh, what Amon is, uh, is sad about here uh, as we move through the day. So Gino is the HOH. He decided that his plan was going to be that he was going to nominate Moose and Summer with the intention to backdoor Marty. Uh, so as we start the day here on day 43, he is going to let Moose and Summer know that they are going up as pawns. Uh, and then he is going to go ahead and nominate both Moose and Summer for eviction. Uh, Moose regrets not pitching Josh as a, as a better pawn after the fact, but it's a little too late. And it also wasn't going to happen anyway. So, uh, right. you know, what, what are you going to do? Um, so I... Uh, that's that's kind of what we're looking at here through the day is it's a again it's a pretty straightforward plan um gino has told moose and summer that they are pawns that marty is the target um he has told josh and betty uh the plan that the, the intention is to backdoor marty um one of the purpose uh one of the purposes of of putting uh moose and summer on the block is that they will not be choosing marty to play in the veto um so uh, so it decreases the odds of Marty being chosen. And mm -hmm. the only people left in the dark right now are Marty, uh, Kevin, and Helena. He has not told Kevin or Helena this either, um, although Josh did kind of give Kevin a little bit of a warning the night before. Um, so that's kind of where things stand as we get to these nominations. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's... It seems pretty straightforward. I mean, I was sort of always under the assumption that Marty would just end up being in the veto just by sheer probability. There really aren't a lot of people left. Um, and when the HOH can't play and that takes one member off the board, I was like, you know, I mean, we can do all of this uh, finagling as much as we want, but it's probably still not going to end up in our favor. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they did what they could. Yes. Well, so, so, uh, there's really there's not too much going on here through the day um, prior to the veto tr veto spin and the veto being played. That's again, yeah. I and I say this every week, but uh, a lot of the conversations prior to the veto are, um, you know, nobody really wants to do anything concrete until they know what's happening with right. the veto. It's a lot so of like, oh well, we'll see what happens, you know. Well, mm -hmm. you know. So. Correctly so as well, uh, that like uh, don't make too many uh, concrete plans before the veto. Um, mm -hmm. Summer is going to talk to Betty. She lets Betty know that she's coming for the showman's. The fact that they put her on the block, let her know where she stands with them. Doesn't matter to her if she's just a pawn. Uh, she's gunning for them and she's telling Betty about it. She does not realize how much damage she's done to the relationship with Betty. Um, not that yeah. Betty will necessarily rat her out here, but... If Betty decided it was good for her game, I think she would. I think really, um, like Summer, like ditching Betty last week for the vote was the best thing that could have happened to Betty's game because she's in a like just a totally like I don't care, I don't give an F mode mm -hmm. now. Uh, she's not about playing friendship games uh, other than with and her Josh. Position but in the house is a lot different now too. So. Exactly. And she's so she's down to just like I, I think she'd be down to, to betray anybody, do whatever at this point, which is great. It was a um it was a bit of a faux pas on Summer's part. I mean, you have weeks and weeks of empirical evidence of do not with Betty. <laughs> <laughs> like, there have been plenty of examples of what happens when you say something uh wrong about betty or you know just annoy her uh so you know i on one hand i mean there was a lot of praise for summer um for being straight up and being honest um especially since since betty is sort of 
and it's a lot of ways similar to that. Like, so look, Betty, I don't know. Like, I'm tr I'm sort of like going over everything in my mind. Like, keeping her mom might not be like the worst thing for me, but I also it's hard because I do have this relationship with you. So it's not like I'm not considering that, and that's what makes it very hard. But I don't. I want to be real with you and tell you, it's not. It's not a cut and dry situation. And to Betty, that was just like. Oh, then we're then we're then we're done then because if I was willing to go all the way for you, if I was willing to give you safety, then how are you not able to reciprocate that? It doesn't make any sense. So it's, in her mind, it's like, all right, well, we're, our relationship is not where it was. But in Summer's mind, it's like, well, I did end up saving you, so that should mean something to you. That should mean, hey, I chose you in the end. But once the you you can't unbreak the mirror, or whatever the hell it is, you can't unring the bell. So yeah. that thought is now in Betty's mind. Yes. Uh, another interesting, maybe not super relevant moving forward, but interesting conversation uh, that happens prior to the veto spin is that Jason and Gino are going to talk about feeling pretty confident that the plan is going to go through. Uh, Gino mentions that, uh, that Kevin talked when he talked to Kevin uh, slash Andrew, uh, that Kevin said that he didn't, didn't really trust Marty, didn't really want to work with Marty too deep. I uh, just didn't feel like this was the week for Marty. So with that, he thinks that once they take out Marty this week, they can they can probably lean in more heavily to the relationship with Kevin and work more closely with him. Um, at, to which Jay says, you know what? You know, thinking about it, I know we talked about preferring Josh and Betty, but we should probably end. We should probably go to the end with Kevin and Helena over Josh and Betty, don't you think? And Gina's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely the call. Uh why though <laughs> cuz they're they're less less scared of them in competitions that uh, they're easier to beat easier to beat in the end easier to beat in competitions uh it's it's the call uh it's the call i expected them to make the same way that i expect josh and betty to turn on uh, on them but uh mm -hmm. it, like i said this you know depending on how this week plays out this might not uh, this might not matter yeah it might not matter but it's just like Y'all are showmans. You know that everybody is going to turn on you at some point. The fact that you think that uh, Helena and Kevin are any less capable of doing that uh, is interesting to me. I mean, I, I, I'm i sort of like weighing it in my mind. Like, who do you beat in the end? Um, can you, you can probably, I mean, I feel like a lot of people can't, at this point in the game, because don't, Betty, Betty lovers don't come for me. At this point in the game, I think a lot of people beat Betty right now um josh is definitely a little harder but at the same time josh's game isn't very is very understated so unless he's able to really explain what's going on with his game i don't know if he's like impossible to beat kevin and helena i mean helena yeah sure maybe kevin though like oh your read is way off because he is about to spin circles i love the fact i love when um during thursday's episode that kevin was so eloquently able to just say like look I got my way, Herman. You have been a worthy adversary. This is what I've been trying to get you out of here. And now you're gone. Like, if that was like a pretext to how we're going to see him explain himself in the end game, all y'all are done. So I'm just like. Well, they don't always have a lot of time in the end game. It's going to have to be I, prior to that. That's true. But I think that Kevin is probably the type of person that kind of knows that as well. So, you know, I'm just, uh, it's just, an, it's just interesting to me that you're like so gung ho for Kevin, and that just, it just goes to show uh, Kevin is playing a really good game right now. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, take him to the end if you want. I guess. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Well, we do get the veto spin. It happens. Um, and uh, it goes very well for Gino here. Um, his plan, again, is to put up Summer and Moose uh, because he knows that Summer and Moose will not choose Marty for the veto. In addition to that, worst case scenario, if the veto is not used, he'd prefer for Summer or Moose to go over one of the people he has a final four with. Um, and the idea here is that with nine people in the game, the HOH not playing, five people playing total, three additional people will be chosen to play in the veto. Three people will not be chosen to play in the veto. The three that he wants to play are Jace, Josh, and Betty. The three that he doesn't want to play are um, Marty, Helena, and Kevin. Um, of those three, Marty's the worst to play because he's won the most and he's the one that he's trying to target. 
then Kevin, who's already won a veto, then Helena hasn't won a competition yet. So if Helena's chosen, that's like the best of the worst case scenarios. And that's pretty much what he gets here. Jace, Josh, and Helena are playing in the veto. It's it's the second best draw he could have gotten from this veto pick. Yeah. Uh, the fact that uh, the only switch would have been Helena out for Betty would have been even better. But the fact that it's Helena there, it's it's basically as good as it gets for a veto draw. Uh, as we head into this veto, Marty not playing, has no chance to protect himself. Yeah. Kevin not playing either. The only person that might not use the veto is Helena, and she hasn't won a thing yet. Like, this, this is, like, starting, like, these veto draws, these competitions, it's starting to be so good that it looks like it's scripted. It's like... <laughs> What did y'all do with that, with that spinning wheel? Because how did this happen? How did the target, and a one that the audience isn't necessarily in favor of, at least a lot of people that I know. So, I mean, Canada's a different beast. <laughs> how, <laughs> how did this happen where he is the only person that is not chosen out of that small number of people that were only available in the first place? When I saw that, I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. But what a bait and switch that turned out to be. It's just a topsy turvy ass season, I tell you. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's, uh, before the veto competition happens, we do get a couple of conversations. One is um, Helena talked to Betty. They were talking about uh, brows, um, and Helena opened up about the fact that she has uh, alopecia, um, which is uh, an autoimmune disease. Uh, and she talked about it. Uh, she may need a hair transplant someday. She said, like, uh, the, the, the third doctor she went to see was very mean about it and was like, yeah, you're, you're going to need a hair transplant. It costs like $60,000 or $20,000. She wasn't sure which one. Uh, she's like, so that was annoying. 60, th- I did not know that they were that expensive. Jesus. Even in Canada? God the damn. <laughs> um, but uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a cool conversation between her and Betty. Um, Gino, uh, talked to Josh, let Josh know, and, and, and just in general, let people know, uh, that he would like for Moose to come off the block when he puts Marty up. Uh, he wants Summer to stay up there. Um, Josh is going to talk to Kevin. Um, and, uh, Josh says, I didn't realize it, but I think you're right, Kevin. Kevin says, well, if that's really the plan, it's amazing that you, that they think you're that close. Um, right. cause again, Josh has kind of let Kevin know about, uh, what the plan is. Um, Kevin says to Josh, man, you have a way of making everyone feel like they're your number one. Uh, and maybe I'm one of those fools, Josh. Josh says, no, oh no, God. you're not. Uh, you oh really my, are my number my. one. <laughs> you know, more and more of this cajoling strategy from Kevin, really buttering people up and making them, you know, admitting that they have a threat level, but doing it ever so slightly that it's like, it's like more of an admiration type of conversation as opposed to looks like I might have to get your ass out of here. Like <laughs> nudge, nudge. So yeah. Um, I, you know, and he's, he's not wrong. Like jo- people love him. Everybody loves Josh. Everybody. I mean, Betty was willing to throw her game away for him last week. Like, Hey, so it's, I mean, it's working for Josh. I don't know how much of that is just because Josh is just so just, I feel like Josh is just, he just has a personality where he's just, a bit of a sounding board. I think that he's mm-hmm. just easy to talk to. I think that people just sort of like whatever emotions that they are feeling, I feel like he sort of like reflects them back at people. And he's just like a chill person. So people just feel comfortable around him. And that's what makes him so dangerous. But also like, I don't necessarily know if he always knows what to do with that information. Now that he has this whole thing with like Kevin and Helena, we're definitely getting to see a bit more of his, of his gaming come out. But before then, it just seemed like he was sort of like just in the abyss. And now he's he's coming out. I'm coming out. So Yeah, if if Josh was an anime character, he'd be like the really quiet, sweet guy with a really big sword. Um that yeah. like he's just he's very like people strength. res <laughs> exactly like people respect his 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 uh power in the game that he's come in second place a lot. Um, but he's yeah, never actually true, had yeah. to like state an opinion or make nominations or do anything like that. So, uh, so people are able to sort of project, uh, what they want, uh, onto him and be right. like, yeah, he's cool and he's powerful. And if he's on my side, then that just makes it all the better. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, 
Josh says to Kevin, you know, every, everyone in this house is great. Uh, they're, they're amazing, but I need somebody I can talk to like you, Kevin. Um, and Kevin says, uh, well, I, here's the thing, Josh. I, I'm concerned that you are being played by Gino and that you're the real target. Uh, Josh is like, I don't think so. Um, and Kevin's like, okay, well, are you, are you like a hundred percent locked into using the veto if you win it? Uh, and Josh says, well, not, not a hundred percent, but Marty is too volatile for me. Uh, he's, he's got to go. Kevin says, all I right, mean, you know what? You're convincing me. You're convincing me. And even if, even if he was the target, if he wins the veto, he can't go on the block anyway. So he might as well use it and get Marty's ass up out of here if he doesn't trust Marty. So yes, um, now, Kevin, sa Kevin says, you're, you're convincing me. I'm not convinced that Josh is convincing Kevin, but I think Kevin is saying that Josh is convincing him because Kevin has no choice in this matter uh, at, right. at, the, at the time. Uh, right. So uh, he says, you're convincing me. You know, Gino's the next big target, right? That, that makes some sense. Um, and he asks Josh, uh, like, hey, you're taking me to the finals over Helena, right? Uh, and Josh is like, yeah, yeah, of course. Would you take me to the finals over Helena? Kevin says, absolutely, yeah. If, uh, especially if Helena never touches the block, uh, which she is now the only person to have not touched the block. Um, Josh says he'd love to sit next to Kevin. Kevin says, I'd love to lose to you. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> the minute anybody says that to me and Big Brother, I'm like, all right, you're on my radar. <laughs> on my radar. <laughs> right. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So many people talk about being fine with losing. And to be fair, some of them are fine with losing. But some of not them the are, ones yeah. that are playing hard. Never no. the ones that are playing hard. No. Like, the um, Kevin, like, you guys don't have, like, that close of a relationship. Even though you guys have been coming together in the past couple of weeks, you don't have that close of a relationship for y'all to be like, oh, I would throw up all my game for you. Like, no. Like, you think that Kevin is, like, at, like, like Betty, Josh? No. No. <laughs> So we get to the veto competition, and uh, it's pretty much everyone against Helena here. If uh, if any one of them wins, the veto will be used, and Marty will be going home. Uh, if Helena wins, things are much more up in the air. Uh, we get back from the veto competition, and uh, guess what season we're on? Um... Big Brother Canada, can't predict, don't know what's going to happen next, anything could happen, 10. And will someone finally please just stick to their plan? <laughs> Helena won the power of veto. Her first comp win. Uh, and it's so wild that all season long, the veto has been used every single week, disrupting the plans of the HOH nearly every single week. Um, and this time, the one person that would not use the veto is the one that wins to disrupt the plan of the HOH this week. <laughs> Somebody finally realized I should start backdooring my target. And that's the week when things go wrong and the veto could maybe not be used. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I uh, I fell to my knees. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. It's just everything is going by so peachy keen. You should have known that it was too good to be true. You should have known it's too good to be true. And it's so weird because so many people uh, were just like so distraught, like saying, "Like, of course, like Big Brother, we never get anything nice." And I'm like, "Well, this actually is part of the course for this season. Like, of course, this would happen. Like, we should have known." This would happen. We had a really good veto draw, but of course it's going to get messed up because it's been getting messed up for the entire yeah, season. Yeah, and I mean, so. I mean, I, I've, I mean, like, uh, if you're, if, I mean, obviously, if you're specifically rooting for like Marty to leave or for certain people to do well, this is a bad mm -hmm. result for you. But, but if you're rooting for more chaos, like. Mm -hmm. This is yet again, like this is preventing a potentially straightforward week of uh, just, you know, sending out the, the the big chaotic person and again, disrupting the plans of the HOH. I mean, it's just it, I, I tweeted this out. It's like the opposite of Big Brother 22, where every single week, like the the worst possible competition outcome happened in in the sense that it kept things stable and steady the whole way through, except for the one. Uh, tiny there meetup. were um, assigned seats 
<laughs> exactly. Okay. Like, <laughs> and 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 in this season, it's like uh, it's like each assigned seat has a trap door button on it, uh, and every time someone sits down, they go wah. It's yeah, it's the craziest game of musical chairs that no demand. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. And of course, yeah, the one person that could disrupt this is going to go ahead and win. And now, you know, this is why I'm sad. Um, Because, you know, it's strictly superficial on my end. I just don't want to see Moose go. I just, you know. And of course, I don't want to see Summer go Uh, either because I don't think that it's, I don't think, yes, yes. I don't think it's going to be cut and dry that Moose is even the one to go, which the other option isn't great either. So I'm just sitting here like, damn, damn it. I really thought that we were going to get rid of Marty this week. I really did. Well, uh, let's let's talk through what might happen here because it's not a done deal. And of course, the veto ceremony won't be until at, uh, tomorrow anyway. So um, there's still plenty of conversations to be had. Um, after Helena wins the veto, Marty lets Kevin know that he's feeling kind of off. He's feeling like uh, do people people not like him in this house. Uh, Kevin's like, no, you're just so amazing. They want you out. That's that's the thing. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Marty's like, I feel like Kalina might have just saved my life in the game. And Kevin's like, you know what, Marty? I've learned, if I've learned anything in this game, it's that I trust your gut. So remember that feeling. I'm sorry. That's just so funny to be like, oh, no, 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 no. People don't like, people don't dislike you. No, 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 no. It's because I like you that I don't want to be with you. It's just <laughs> a complicated emotion. Like, you're just too good you know <laughs> just um, out of your greatness <laughs> marty says uh he doesn't think it would have been a good move for the showmance if they had targeted him because he's not coming for the showmance but he knows that other people are um and uh kevin tells marty uh because marty is icing his knee he's like keep keep doing that keep icing your knee marty's like i don't need i don't need to keep he's like no i mean like Fake it, like yeah. Target wise, oh, ah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I I really wanted the narrative of uh Gino getting his way only just so that Marty could understand that like he messed up so many times and that how bad it is. And now this is like perfect ammo for Kevin to then go next week since Gino should be the target, right? And if Marty so happens to win HOH again, like. Will Kevin then go ahead and they'll tell you know Marty? Oh yeah, well he was he was going to get you out of here. Like you, you know you you should put him up on the block. So this is going to be an interesting volley back and forth between the three of them. Mm. So uh, Gino's going to talk to Betty and Josh about how to how they're going to try and convince Helena Helena to use the veto um, after yeah, Gino. <laughs> well, after Gino leaves, uh, Betty's like uh, like. I've just gotta I've just gotta keep pretending like I care about this guy. <laughs> like I keep like we're trying to we've got the same goal for sure, Gino. Yeah, I'm totally yeah. on board. Um Josh says uh he wonders who said his name because Gino had said in the conversation that uh somebody said Josh's name. Now we know this is Marty, and I think J- Josh is trying to get to that point. Um, but uh, but Betty's like, no, 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 he was talking about how to convince Helena. And Josh is like, no, he said somebody said my name. She said, No, we were talking about Helena. Uh Josh, what's what's what, what slot brain are you on right now? He's like, Oh, okay. Uh um, like, what slot plane are you on right now, Betty? <laughs> <laughs> like you heard yeah. what he heard. Um, so uh Josh says that he thinks that anybody that wins HOH next week, apart from Jace, will take the shot at the showman's. Um, and Betty's like, yeah, but we need to be the ones to do it ourselves. We don't want somebody else to do it. And Josh is like, yeah, oh, but but that blows up our whole game. And we'd look bad to the jury. Uh, and Betty's like, no, what? No, what are we going to do? Take out Kevin or Helena? How does that look to the jury? Yes! Uh, <laughs> Josh is like, we, well, we, we would have to make it seem like we orchestrated the whole thing. She's like, we have. Uh, we just got these two idiots to save us the week after we orchestrated trying to vote one of them out. Uh, mm. Like, uh, we need to be the ones to make this shot. Yeah, no, and I, and I agree. I mean, it's 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 a really it's an easy move. I mean, they, they've been they, they have long overstayed their welcome. Okay, um, it, it's an it's a it's a move that everybody can get behind on. Um, you know, where does it leave you after? It's sort of like it's still a tenuous situation, but it's still one thing that like the longer along that you leave them in there, the more and more powerful they become. They're always going to be two votes together. And it's just like optically, well, 
there's that word again. <laughs> um, it's just it just looks bad on, on, on your part. Like every jury member that goes into the house and sees that Gino or Jace are still not there, it's like, oh well, well we're go- that's just another week to build a case to vote for them in the end. So even as like um in danger from like uh Kevin and Helena that Josh and Betty really are, you still gotta go for Gino or Jace. You still got to because y'all waited so long. You you screwed yourselves into into having to do it now. Yeah, and it's interesting because I obviously was expecting Josh and Betty to turn on Gino and Jace, you know, next week essentially. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought it would be Josh convincing Betty, not the other way around. Um, you know, trying to get into Josh's head still a little bit strange. But uh, but yes, Betty fully fully willing to uh, to turn already. Um, in the meantime, uh, Kevin's going to talk to Gino. Uh, they talk about being excited that Helena won something. And uh, Kevin's like, hey, we might be in an alliance that might be working right now. We're winning all the comps. Uh, and Gino's like, uh, yeah, well, and people still think that I hate Marty, which is good for us. Gino's still not letting Kevin or Helena know yeah. that uh, the plan is to take out uh, Marty, which is not great for Gino, considering yeah. that uh, Josh is going to talk to Kevin late into the night. It's the last conversation of the night. And uh, he says to Kevin, oh, no, if Helena uses the veto, Marty definitely goes up. Um, and Kevin's like, well, is that a, is that a good thing? Um, and Josh is like, yes, because if Marty leaves, everyone is now targeting the showman. Uh, and Kevin's like, you, you sure it's not you that's going to go up? Josh is like, oh, yes. Okay, look, in order for Betty to stay... We had to make like a ceasefire with the showman's, uh, which is why we're not on the block. Uh, we had to make like this four thing with them. They think that we're we have a deal with them. Um, Kevin's like, oh, well, who else knew? Josh is like, well, we like Betty know, knows about the back door, um, and yeah, you know, I'm sure he told Moose. Um, I don't know if Summer knows. So, in Ke- so it's like the the whole house, other than Kevin and Helena. Uh, Kevin's like, well, have you told Helena this? Josh says, no, no, no I'll tell her. I'll tell her tomorrow. Um, and Josh says, look, even if Jace wins next week, it'll still be Moose and Summer on the block. It's good for us if Marty leaves. Um, and Kevin is going to do something throughout the conversation, which is um, put all the put all the onus on uh, Helena. He's like, have you told Helena? He then says, well, mm-hmm. do you think Helena would turn on Marty? Uh, and Josh is like, maybe, like if the logic is right. Uh, and he's like, okay. Um, and Kevin's like, you don't, you don't think the information we got from Gino this week could convince Marty to go after them? Josh is like, no. No, because that'll blow us up. We can't do that. Um, Kevin's like, all right, okay. Yeah. Um, th- okay, so Gino, yeah, this is bad for you because you already got Josh spilling your tea. Secondly, bad for you because the longer that you wait to eventually clue Helena and Kevin in on this plan, the more and more that you're like, they're going to be like, why didn't you just, where is this all coming from? What, did, what what do you mean get rid of Marty? Like, I thought you I thought we squashed this whole thing. Like, so you're making it harder for your case to convince Helena the longer yep. you keep her in the dark. And then when she finds out how many other people were clued in before her, it's like there is no incentive for her to be invited in on this because she was not there in, to begin with. Kevin, on yep. the other hand, great for you because you are. I, I like the way that he handled the conversation because it's like Josh is over here trying to save trying to make this happen to keep other targets in the house ahead of him. And Kevin is trying to make this not happen to keep Marty in the house as a target ahead of him. And they both are just trying to protect the targets ahead of the targets ahead of the targets. And it's just like, which one is going to get their way? We Well, we know what's going to happen because Helena's not going to use this veto. There really is no incentive for her to. And it's good for Kevin to go ahead. And when this does not happen, it's not because Kevin didn't know it because Josh, you clued me on the plan. I was down for it. Like, I was just trying to make sure that it was okay for all of us. But Helena is the one that doesn't want to do it. And she's we're just so try close to, to Marty. Yeah. We're going to try to talk to her. But if it doesn't happen, then oh well. So I think Kevin is, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's playing this pretty well. Um, and I think uh, by all intents and purposes, no matter what happens, even if Marty were to go home, you still have. Gino and Jace ahead as a target. And then there is always still, now that both Summer and Moose have been put into this as well, they are still easy nominations for next week as well. So no matter what happens, I think I think that one outcome is definitely better 
for in both of their cases in Josh and Kevin. But I think at the end of the day, there still is a bit of a security blanket, depending on who wins, of course, next week. There is a bit of a security blanket around the both of them still. So very interesting conversation to watch. Yes. And, uh, it, uh, you know, in some ways, Helena winning this veto really helped uh, Kevin. Um, I mean, obviously, in a lot of ways, but it helped Kevin in the sense that, like, Kevin was really behind in terms of information for the first time in weeks. Uh, he really didn't have a lot of this information. And, and a lot of it is news to him. He's like, I I'm being played by Gino and Jace. Uh, Josh didn't tell me this until now when he had to because of the veto being won by Helena. Um, and like, I've, I've been the person who's, uh, who's on the outs and clueless here. Uh, and you know, you can see his mind just like working as Josh is telling him this information, like, Oh crap. Uh, yeah. like I, I, I'm, I'm, I need to catch up here. Um, and so, uh, Kevin asks Josh like, okay, well, so who would you want to leave if the, if the noms stay the same? Josh says, I would want Moose to go because Summer's targeting, targeting the showmance and Summer's a number for us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm honestly not that close to Moose. We've talked game like three times. Um, and you know, who knows what he might do. Uh, Kevin says, uh, asks who he would want out first between like, let's say Marty stays, who would you want to go first, Gino or Marty? Uh, and Josh says again, Marty, I mean, he's too volatile. He needs to go. Uh, Kevin says, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, I think we have to watch out for Gino. I think Gino's playing the same game as us. Josh is like, I don't think so. And says, well, they're, they're running the house right now. Uh, and Josh says, well, yeah, they think they are because they think they have me and Betty. Um, and Kevin's like, that's sick. It's so, so it's really, it's really, it's you that's playing really well. Uh, and Josh is like, well, thank you. Um, he's <laughs> like, it's smart. It's really smart. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, Kevin is seeing that, you know, prior to this veto win at the very least, Josh really was in, in the, the power position here. Um, and he's like, how did you steal that? I thought I had it in my pocket. How did you get that? Mm -hmm. uh, can I just, can yeah. I have that back, please? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And so like, and then how, so how do you, how do you move forward knowing all of this now? And yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, Josh is like admitting how close he is with Gino, but also telling Kevin that, well, I'm only doing that because, this, that, and the third, because we want him to feel like he has this power. But when you admit that, you are admitting that you are being a, you are playing, like you're playing the game. So it's hard to like, for someone like Kevin, it's hard to sit there and watch and be like, you're not gonna like this whole, like what Josh thinks is going to happen. Like this whole, oh, don't worry. Like you and I are still together. Like we're good. Um, I'm playing the hell out of Gino right now. It's like, that's not going to make that. That would make some players feel good. Like, oh yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Oh yeah, look at you. Yeah, like team or team Josh. Yeah. But to Kevin, it's like, ooh. <laughs> this yeah. is uh, kind of frightening. So Kevin, Kevin says, look, I'm, I'm back and forth on it right now, this Marty thing. And Josh keeps pitching. Kevin says, let, let me sleep on it. Let me sleep on it. He said, I, he said I, you know, I, I would rather be a week early than a week late when it comes to taking Marty out. But, but maybe we're two weeks early right now. Uh, he says, uh, you know, like if, if Marty is still here and, and one, of, uh, one of them, you know, win HOH, he'd want uh, like one of Kevin or Josh or Helena wins HOH, he'd want one of, marty or gino to go he really thinks marty and gino should be uh you know the next to go maybe after this week um and uh josh says look uh, and he says because marty marty just has he has nobody right now he has nobody uh and josh says look we're, we're running things whatever we decide will happen uh and and kevin's are you trying are you trying to use my thing on me yeah. it's it's working i like it i mean it's really it's really <laughs> not a bad like as you know as i know uh, kevin wants to keep him there but at the same time it's like kevin if you really think about it, and i'm trying to be as objective as possible because i'm you know obviously i would like to see marty join her mod in jury i just want to see it i just need to see it i need to see it for my soul but at the same time josh is right about marty marty is very volatile mm -hmm. and i don't know why kevin feels as though he is immune from marty <laughs> doing whatever 
like you are not sir you might think that you have like the reins over marty and it's good to have him in the house because he's a number for you and he's a shield head he is a shield and that is about it he is a shield until he is not one so taking him out might not be the most ideal but it's not the end of the world for you either so i just I'm going to be interested to see how much he decides to push against it. He would, he, he, he really benefited from the fact that Helena won this veto, so he can just, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But it had he not, if Kevin had won this veto, how far are you willing to soil your name in the name of Marty? And does that destroy your game? So. I mean, and that's uh, Josh makes a good pitch. And, and this is sort of why, even though Kevin was left in the dark this week, I was not too concerned for Kevin's game overall because Marty leaving wasn't the worst thing because I was expecting Josh and Betty to turn on uh, Gino and Jace. And mm-hmm. I was expecting Gino and Jace to turn on Josh and Betty and pick Kevin and Helena. All of those things were happening um, and still theoretically could happen. Um, but I, I think... Party part of the issue here is that Kevin wasn't uh, kept, you know, informed of what was happening all the time. And, and I think that if you are, if I'm Kevin in this spot, and Josh is telling me all these things, mm-hmm. days, days late, days late when he has to because the veto has been won by Helena, um, I'm gonna be like, oh crap, I might have just underestimated Josh. Um, and I need to make sure that similar to what I said that Josh should be doing in regards to Kevin, like if somebody else is telling you what they think makes sense for both them and you, and you're just following along with their plan, it's probably not best for you. Uh, mm-hmm. Kevin might be able to make it best for him. I don't think it's yeah. the worst thing for Marty to go here. Uh, but at the same time, like I'd be very worried about the fact that Josh is telling me all these things, that Josh has this secret deal with Gino and Jace. He has no reason to think Gino and Jace would pick him over Josh, considering the fact that he's been li- he's literally just had a conversation with Gino where Gino was just flat out lying to his face. Um, and it's like, oh, my God, like, uh, I, you know, whereas I've got this I've got this bulldog. Um, that will uh, that will run rampant through the house and cause chaos, uh, which is where I thrive. Um, you know, I think that's probably where he's thinking. But I but I do agree. I think Josh makes a good case, and I don't think it's I don't think it's terrible for uh, for Kevin if Marty leaves. In fact, just I think as we're having this um, this update, uh, Marty was talking with Kevin about how he still wants to bring Gino to the Final Four, which is obviously not good for Kevin. So he'd need to be able to convince Marty to to get out of that headspace, which might be impossible because, you know, Marty is uh, Marty. There was no reasoning in the reasoning. It's like Marty has like he wakes up in the morning and it's just like a poster of Gino on the ceiling above his bed. And it's just <laughs> like, ah, and then like. A week later, it's just like, oh, I got to get rid of him. Like, just like, it's just the, the weirdest thing, uh, this obsession that he has with uh, with Gino. Um, but yeah, I don't, yeah, it, this is uh, this is going to be really interesting because it's sort of like on Kevin's instance, like, do you go with the enemy that you sort of kind of like, no, because like, Gino is clearly lying to you about the whole Marty thing. But here is Josh sort of like being completely honest with you about everything, but it also doesn't bode well entirely for your game. So what is it that you that you do moving forward? So, yeah, I think I think the I think the path forward here, if they're going to save Marty, which it seems like they will. So that was last Mm -hmm. night. Um, Kevin ends the conversation with Josh saying, let's talk to Helena tomorrow and see what she says. Um, or he says, you talk to Helena tomorrow and see what she says. He, Kevin has already gotten to Helena to confirm, hey, so we're not using the veto, right? Uh, yeah. And she was like, yeah. uh, people are going to want me to, but I think it would be dumb to. And Kevin's like, exactly, don't use it. Uh, so he's he's getting Helena on board with not using it so that when Josh talks to Helena, she pushes back and it's Helena's fault. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, so so that's that's in place. Helena does not intend to use the veto right now. Maybe she will be swayed by Josh's arguments. Maybe that will become a thing. But for now, the plan is to not use it. I think if this plan is going to go through, I think it's vital for Kevin to 
separate himself from Helena um, by any means uh, possible right now. I think that uh, Kevin needs to sort of like to the to the general population be like i can't believe she wouldn't use the veto to backdoor marty like you know for what like uh they'll find out the plan whatever it is because they're probably going to pitch the plan to them kevin should act like he really wants it to happen um helena needs to kind of like for kevin's game maybe not for helena's game um be like out on an island like oh kevin would have wanted this to happen but Helena doesn't. That way, it prevents them from looking like a trio, which is more dangerous than potentially the showman's. Uh, and more really? like if you've got Helena and Marty, you've got Jason Gino. Uh, you know, either one could be targeted th- at that point. Uh, because I think that there is definitely a danger that if this does go through and then one of them doesn't win uh, HOH, they might just still go straight for Marty. And this time, they'll put Helena up next to Marty with Kevin as a backup or something yeah. along those lines. Which Helena is which is potentially is, dangerous. Helena is screwed. I think. I think in terms of like her image in the house, it really is going to take a hit. Um, because for one, she's not going. I. I just. I don't see a world in which she gets swayed. I just. I. She doesn't. I mean, she has been. She's had this chip on her shoulder, with like the whole that whole side of the house. With like, uh, there's probably a part of her that relishes the fact that Summer is going to remain on the block. Um, I just I just don't see her getting swayed. So the fact that there's going to be at least a few people that are going to be displeased with her choosing not to win or not to use that veto, and then Marty does not go home, that's going to reveal things to a lot of people for Helena. And I just think that she's just not. And then if you have Kevin, her only ally, that if if he does what you say and sort of just you know throws her to the wolves ever so gently, it's just not looking great. And now she's ultimately tied with Marty. She'll go up next to him if Marty does not, or one of his allies doesn't win HOH. Um, it's just, this was a good veto for her to win, but she doesn't have like the support to, I think, come out of it unscathed. I mean, th- I think they would have the number. So, I mean, I think the odds of the them losing the next HOH would be, would be somewhat low, right? Like, because right. Um, you have Marty playing, you have both have Kevin and Helena playing, Josh, all four of those people would not, put Helena or Kevin on the block and there's eight players. There's uh, six people, uh, right. Um, Or seven, six people playing in the veto total or in the HOH total. So four of those six people would not do anything. Jace or summer slash moose would be the only people playing that might put, you know, Kevin and Helena on, or sorry, Marty, Marty and Helena on the block. And even then summer might still be gunning for the showman's. So it's really like, it's not too likely that this is that this goes wrong for them, but it does leave that door open. But the door is still right. open, you know, the other way as well, where it's like, um, you know, it, I think it's probably a safer play to not have Marty there, but but safer in the sense that like you still have to hope that the game isn't going to just run away from you uh, as you give up your own pieces. Uh, so again, it's it's an interesting decision, and uh, and I do think also that Helena has a lot of ammunition to not use this because, as you mentioned oh, yeah. earlier. I think the biggest mistake of this HOH uh, is not the nominations, not the plan for the veto, because I actually think those were all pretty solid. Um, it was that they they didn't tell Kevin and Helena about the plan ahead of time, uh, that they, they thought it wouldn't get out. Like, you just put, like, that's the thing. Because you the only reason you don't tell Kevin and Helena about the plan to backdoor Marty is if you think that if it goes wrong, they never have to find out. Right. But you told Moose and Summer which right. means if the plan doesn't go through to backdoor Marty, the two of them end up on the block together. They have no incentive to keep your secrets anymore uh, right. because you just screwed them over. So they're gonna t- it's going to get out, and they're going to find out that they weren't in on the plan. Uh, and if they win the veto, there's no incentive for them to use the veto when they weren't included in the plan to begin with. Use the leverage that you have as the HOH to be like, hey— I'm the HOH. This is what I want to do with the week. I want to backdoor Marty. Will you agree to use the veto if you win it? So, and and if you agree to do that, then I won't put you on the block because I won't need to because I'll trust your word. And now they have incentive. Now they have to break their word in order to keep Marty in the game. Whereas if they pitch it now and they find out like, oh, but you kept me in the dark about this plan. Like, yeah, it's too late. And they have all the reason in the world to be like, I'm, I don't know about this. So uh, I, that was, in my opinion, the, the the huge mistake of this HOA train. Um, 
and uh, probably one of the big reasons why this, uh, if it doesn't go through with Marty, that it, that it won't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you want to put them in a position where they have to, where there's like, not, where, where they have to continuously defend their own position, and which only reveals things to you. I mean, you, you didn't, you didn't tell them, you didn't tell yeah. them, and now they have all of this. They, all of this time that you could have been spending convincing them this needs to happen. Even if Helena and Kevin went back to another room and were like, "We're not doing that. Screw that." Like, at least at that point, it would have been like out in the open. But now there's like so much that. Helena can say that doesn't even have anything to do with the situation and she could just blame it entirely on her relationship with Moose and Summer like she has no reason <laughs> so and, and honestly like they might be able to get it to a point if they if they like if you're Kevin and Helena and you know that there's there might be a pitch coming to try to get you to use the veto there's a way that you can approach conversations with Gino and Jace especially because they're such passive players where you could probably convince them in a conversation to not even make the pitch to you at all uh, which means you don't have to turn it down. Like if you talk about like, well, obviously, so obviously I'm not, you. obviously the plan is that we're not using it on Marty. Uh, we're, you know, we wouldn't be backstabbers. Like uh, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do that. It doesn't make any sense. Um, they might be like, okay, we're not even going to bother pitching, which means again, you don't have to turn them down, which means you don't have to damage that relationship even more. Uh, like there's a way to, to approach that. Right. So, um, you know, it's, and I, it, it, that's, and I think that's the way they should try to approach it. And I don't even know if, at least for one of them, you even need to do much because this whole thing with JL and Summer, this is what I was <laughs> effing afraid of, okay? This is exactly what I was afraid of. This whole triangle. Summer is, or JL is so annoyed with her and just so ready to see her go and just wants Gino out of herself, which is, you know, it's fine. It is what it is. But it's also embarrassing for her because Gino has had no qualms with letting everybody else know, namely Summer. It's just it's just a show, man. It's just a thing for the show. I'm not really into it. It's, it's fine. And so now you got JL out here thinking that Summer is trying to encroach upon her, her man. And Summer really can't be bothered. And it's just like, now you're on the block, Summer, and you cannot protect yourself. And if JL really, really wants to drive this force home of like, let's get rid of Summer, you can't do anything about it. And I'm just like, oh, why? Why? This is not the way that I would want to see her go out because I know that's exactly mm -hmm. what JL would do. It's just, it's just so aggravating. I'm so upset by this. I'm so bad. But I also don't want Moose to go home either. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? Well, yeah. so let's let's talk about this. So uh, assuming the veto doesn't get used, Kevin and, and Josh talked about Josh wanting Moose to go. Um, but there are six votes and four would decide uh, who leaves. We've kind of gotten the implication from Gino and Jace that they would prefer for Summer to go, or at least Jace would. Um, obviously, Gino you know, wanted Moose off the block in order to backdoor Marty. Now, he did imply that he would want the bigger target to leave which would mean Moose. So uh, I think Gino could go either way, but Jace may be leaning Summer. Um, and if Jace is leaning Summer, maybe that's a way for Kevin and Helena to uh, keep in their good books to be like, look, we're willing to work with you on who leaves this week uh, between Moose and Summer. Um, if they wanted to, Jace, um, uh, Kevin, and Helena could decide this vote with Gino as a tiebreaker. Uh, they could, uh, you know, do whatever they want. Obviously, Marty could also vote, and they might not even need the tiebreaker. Uh, or Kevin, Josh, Helena, and Betty as a four, a group of four, could decide the vote to make sure that Moose goes over summer if they want to go against what the showman's wants, or if the showman's is willing, which is more like the showman's probably willing to go in either direction. Uh, but either way, I don't think it's necessarily a lock for what's going to happen between Summer and Moose. Though at this time, it does seem that Kevin is on board with keeping Summer. He said to Summer this morning that he would mm -hmm. uh, that he would, uh, he would would be, be keeping her if the nom stayed the same. Um, and if that's what Kevin wants, I'm inclined to believe that that's what will happen at this point, not just because he's been an influential player, but also because uh, he, uh, you know, he is a very valuable swing vote right now. So, um, you know, we will see. But uh, it does look bad for uh, for Moose. Oh. Uh.
Uh, I know, I know. It's been, it's been ever since the week with Steph. It's been just such a, a fun time watching him, um, in the house and play. And uh, he sort of like bumbled around. Um, I mean, I, th- I think he's always he was always going to have a tough road. Um, but that just sort of like makes it fun to watch him go through it. Um, and so it, it this will suck. Um, if Helena is the the reason that everything just couldn't happen the way that it was supposed to. And now we have to see him go. But, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's it, like you said, it's not set in stone. I really feel like, and this is people that can't attend, so this really could happen either way. I just need for Summer to just just play dead a little bit. Just play dead. Just the, just the touch. Not so much that, you know, people are acting like you're being distant with them. Like, be cordial with JL, you know? Be cordial with uh, with with Gino. Um, be the lovely, buttery summer that we all know and love. But just back off a little bit because I feel like if you don't, all it takes is just one instance for JL to just be like, I want her out of here. <laughs> so. I mean, there's very there's very little reason for anybody to want Summer out over Moose. She hasn't won anything yet. She hasn't uh, won anything. I don't think that she's throwing things anymore. I think that she just is having a hard time. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, all right. We'll see. Anything else you wanted to bring up, Amon? Uh, no, that's it. Um, just, uh, it'll be a sad week all, all, all the way around for me. But, uh, you know. Still having a great time with the show in general. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here today. I will, of course, be back tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern to update you on everything that happens today on the Big Brother Canada 10 live feeds. I think what the things that we're looking for today are the conversations between Josh and Helena, uh, the crash test dummies in general, seeing what Jace and Gino have planned for trying to pitch to Helena to use the veto. And then um, if the veto is not going to be used, what kind of... uh, conversations will take place regarding the two remaining nominees between summer and moose so uh thank you again for joining us uh i will be live today on twitch twitch.tv slash taren armstrong playing some goose goose duck uh with the crew we'll hang out um and then of course be live tomorrow night during the episode watching live with you uh, at 7 p.m eastern and then after the episode we'll be live to talk about the episode uh that we are going to see over on monday so check all of that out Check out the Taryn Show with Gabby. Uh, great conversation with Gabby from Survivor. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Armstrong Taryn. Amon, where can people find you? You can follow me everywhere at Amon Adwin. I will also be here later today um, playing with Taryn and the rest of the gang for Goose Goose Duck. Um, Matt and I have officially brought things, I won't say to a close, but we are, um, for the time being, no longer producing any more episodes of the uh, choir room. So if you haven't been able to keep up, now you've got 250 episodes of Glee to just either watch alongside while you're watching Glee or just listen to in general. So make sure that you check out all of that stuff going on over at the choir room. And of course, you can also find me covering RuPaul's Eternal Drag Race <laughs> over on the RHAP Rehab Up. So I'm going to actually go ahead and record with Beth and Liana as soon as I leave Taryn and you all. So check that out later in the week. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here today. And I will see all of you 